Welcome back guys, this is Maverick here, and we are now ready for another episode of No Guns Life, and also another arc as well. So, since this is a new arc, not really much to recap, but uh, judging from the way that things ended last episode, you know, with the Gunslave unit coming out and assassinating uh, one of the key witnesses to, uh, I guess, some happenings within the extended and whatnot and experimentation. I think it's a fair guess to say that uh, that gunslave unit either belongs to the government or the corporation or these two are you know, sort of in cahoots with each other, right? And so that is where I'm guessing that this arc is going to continue on with. Uh, is that true or not? Well, let's just hop into the episode and find out together. Alright, let's begin in 3, 2, 1, play. Man, I am freezing over here. Oh. Is that an umbrella that they're holding? Well, hello, ladies. Go kick it now. Wait, is that... What? Honest COO? <laughs> okay, so we can now this is part of the corporation. Oh, hello. So, unforeseen circumstance. Huh. So that gunslave unit does not belong to the corporation, I'm guessing. Interesting. <laughs> the, the COO and whole board thing was also interesting as well. But, uh, anyways, let me skip this real quick. And back. The reverb. <laughs> you know, this guy is actually quite high ranking in the corporation. Oh no, wait. So, okay. So those two are working with the corporation. <laughs> He's trying to cover his ass right now by spinning it in this way. But she's having none of it. <laughs> oh, there's more. The chief strategy officer. I mean, we can probably guess he's going to blow it, right? <laughs> this is certainly a weird bunch. So do we have a CDO here? Oh, 
Oh, so it is the sister. Okay. So now they're going rude. Hmm. Oh, so those are the people. Okay, so five. And they're all part of the board as well. So you got COO, CSO, CEO. I'm guessing the rest two, rest of two are CTO and CFO. Worker skilled. <laughs> that certainly gives me some Evangelion vibes. <laughs> Did you five like transform yourselves into this weird? Statue, robot, extended thingy. <laughs> Died from the collapse of a decaying bridge. All right. Well, at least they didn't pin the blame on Druza. Hot pot again. It's like you gotta come eat. And he's going to reject, and maybe he'll accept him at the end of this arc. Hey, the rational one.
You cindere. Uh, let's sell literally right now. Yep. Oh, never mind. <laughs> there we go. The gang is complete. I feel like it might end with him actually being able to walk on his own without extensions. Ooh. Yeah, she's literally the, the least we know about out of the three so far. Avoiding the question. Come on, we don't need to pan to her underwear. Let's go. Her father? Her brother? Her lover? Probably not lover. Lover? Her father? Her brother? <laughs> I'm just repeating myself. Is this a trap? I don't know. Wait, is it literally this guy? She was talking about this guy? Oh no, never mind. You know, if you think about it, the corporation really thought of a, an ingenious business model. You sell these extensions and not only can you get the money from the ex selling the extensions, but it's basically selling stuff to them for life because they need maintenance, they need replacements, and they even need the medicine as well.
Like, I wouldn't be surprised if the corporation also hold, held monopoly over the meds. Probably doing something illegal. <laughs> Wait. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that, you probably shouldn't have done that. Just gonna re <laughs> yep. Okay. Didn't take it. <laughs> ah. Okay, big brother.
There we go. It's the ex anti extension people yet again. Hey, and that's. Huh, so he's working with the anti extension. I guess they want to take down the memorial or something like that. Well, anyways, see you guys after this. Alrighty, so there we go with the start of a new arc, and as expected, it did complete. It did just directly uh, carry over from the ending of the last arc, and we meet more of the actual corporation, right? So we actually see the board of directors now. All the C-level executives, all five of them. So we see this chief operating officer, the chief strategy officer, and uh, we have mention of the chief executive officer. Now, by you know, by normal business hierarchy, I would expect the remaining two to be the chief technology officer and then also the chief financial officer as well. So those two remaining. I guess uh, maybe potentially one of them could be the chief marketing officer, but uh, that's not important, right? So um, we do kind of know that they probably have some sort of immortality uh, built into them. I'm guessing that they are extended in a way somehow, um, especially with the, you know, with the sort of monologue at the end by Cunningham saying that there's rumors that they start the Great War, uh, but yet the Great War was something that happened that lasted for like half a century. So that would mean, you know, they're at least 50 years, right? And they had to have power even before the Great War. So they've lived a very, very long time already. And well, like I was saying, it's at the end of the day, it seems like this is a pretty uh, ingenious business plan, right? You know, you start the war, you sell the arms, and then you get the people hooked onto the arms, and then you also sell the upgrades, you also sell the uh, the the medicine and whatnot. You can control the population, right? So that is, you know, from a pure business perspective, that is ingenious. Now, with what they were saying uh, overall, you know, with the evolution and whatnot, I do wonder if there's also another ideological thing going on with with the entire corporation like they truly believe that they are advancing humankind something of that sort um you know we, we've seen this kind of organizations before um so it wouldn't surprise me if they actually felt what that what they were doing was just and complete and they're just trying to enhance humankind right uh which would make for a pretty interesting uh antagonist organization as well um you know i do like i do like the kind of you know, narrative that that has the bad guys actually, you know, having some justice to what they believe in. I'm sorry, not some justice to what they believe in, but having some actual um, substance to what they believe in. So what they, they believe that what they're doing represents justice, right? Uh, I feel like that makes it much more compelling than just something purely driven by greed. So um, we are probably going to learn more about them in this arc, and that is a good thing. And we also actually found out what happened, what truly happened in the last arc as well. So it seems that one, it was actually one of the others, uh, one of the others from the original unit that wanted to spill the beans first, and then Mega Arm was the one who silenced him, and that caused a chain of events of eventually Gondry being brought in as sort of the scapegoat, and then, you know, all the way to this end right here, right? So, you know, the, the stuff about him, I was talking about in the previous arc where Gond it seemed really fishy that Gondry was going on this killing spree and yet leaving evidence that it was him for apparent no reason. So it's explained here, and that makes a lot more sense than, um, you know, what the conclusion that Juzo and the others came up with, right? Which, by the way, just tell it goes to show you that they are really crappy investigators. I mean, like, that really made no logical sense at all. And this, um... Uh, and I'm glad that the the series did actually clear this up, right? So the author probably also knew that it made no sense, but he had a good explanation for everything. Um, so beyond that, uh, uh, what's for this episode? I mean, what's for this arc, right? Um, we do see the mention of the Spitzbergen again, the anti-extended faction. Like I said, I do feel like they are going to have a very prominent role in the future as well, although whether or not it happens in this season, we'll see. Um, but we do know that this time the cult is going to be working with him, right? And potentially Mary's brother, Victor, uh, maybe is also related with them in some way, shape, or form. Um, and since they are meeting at the memorial, um, tomorrow, 
I am guessing that they are probably going to do something to either defile the memorial or something like that in order to advance, you know, anti-extended sediments and anti-extended uh, positions, right? So that's my best guess for what's going to happen next episode. And then obviously Pepper and Seven are going to show up at some time and they're going to have a big fight with Juzo. And then potentially Juzo will remember something, uh, some more about what happened during his time uh, in the Gunslave unit, right? Uh, so yeah, I think that about pretty much recaps this episode. Uh, we do see Mary moving in as well, as well as Tetsuro formally saying that he wants to join Juzo, join forces with him. And so I expect at the end of this arc, we'll see them actually, actually forming this sort of team, this sort of trio, right? Hopefully that is the case. So, there you go, that's my review of No Guns Life Episode 9. Let me know if I missed anything or you guys have some other thoughts as to how the story will go. If not, I'll see you guys next week. Till then, bye bye.